If you had to summarize in terms of your operations, the year 2020, what one word would you use? Hmm. Unique. Um, tremendous. Out of the box. Challenging. Solution. Dynamic. The one word I would use to describe 2020 is reinvention. The Farmhouse Project uh, started off as a blog um, of my husband and I moving to upstate New York from Manhattan and restoring a 220-year-old home. Um, organically, it grew into a large social media following and a lifestyle brand where we share tips on renovating, decorating, interior design, recipes, and hosting community events. We're hosting dinners with 150 plus people and makers markets and other really great events. Um, and then of course COVID happens and we have to stay home and not socialize. We reinvented by redesigning our website to accommodate a bigger audience and to simplify the website where people could go on and easily purchase our home goods collection. And the terrain and table dinners that we host, where last year we were having 150 plus people, suddenly instead of canceling it, we kind of reinvented it and had socially distant um, monthly dinners this summer where it's 50 people. And as opposed to one long communal table, we have socially distant tables that are a little more intimate and um, giving our guests the experience of being in an outdoor dinner in the Sullivan Catskills. It was quite inspiring and emotional to hear guests throughout the summer call in or, you know, explain to us of how this was their first time out to a restaurant or a dinner or an experience like this and people were just thanking us and being very appreciative that we were still able to be creative and rethink this business and react so quickly. I think this is a time where we all have to be creative and small businesses all over the country including the Sullivan Catskills are really struggling and I think you just need to look at your business model and the first thing that you need to look at is to keep your guests or clients or customers and our community as safe as possible and go from there and work backwards and just really reinvent on your business model to keep it safe and to keep your business afloat, which is very important. Our dinners, for example, you know, we don't always need to have a long communal event and table where we could all break bread together and cheers together, where sometimes intimate dinners and events are just as special because there are people celebrating birthdays or anniversaries or special occasions. So that's something we're thinking about going forward. Don't be afraid to reinvent yourselves. And what you've done in the past, maybe last year or 10 years ago, you always have to be creative and not be afraid of change. It's been a challenging year, and here to talk about that is Sullivan Catskills Board Chair, Sims Foster. That's just one example of how one of our member businesses confronted a difficult year, and you're going to hear more. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sims Foster, Board Chair of the Sullivan Catskills Visitors Association and co-founder of Foster Supply Hospitality, a group of small hotels and restaurants here in the Western Sullivan Catskills. Normally, we gather every December to celebrate the accomplishments of our tourism industry. 
And COVID-19, of course, has changed that. But it will not dampen our will or kill our spirit. We carry on because the way forward mirrors our past path. We became successful through hospitality as far back as the 19th century when people flocked here, first by train and then by car to fish, relax and escape. Tourism has been an integral part of our economy, driving sales, employment and tax revenue. The economic benefits our industry brings to households, businesses and government are significant. Regionally, tourism generates $1.6 billion and supports nearly 20,000 jobs. The Sullivan Catskills accounts for 37% of that spending and 20% of total employment. Our work bringing visitors here is resulting in unprecedented success. The latest tourism economics report for 2019 by Oxford Economics reveals that tourism generated $578 million. That's an increase of 12.2% over 2018 and an impressive 28% improvement since 2017. This significant growth has a direct impact on jobs and labor income, and it lowers the burden on all local taxpayers. We headed into 2020 on a path to top our record-setting growth, and then COVID-19 threw up a caution light. Suddenly, the tourism economy was devastated with expected worldwide losses of $400 billion, seven times the impact of 9-11. But we have not let it stop us. Our mission to promote and support the Sullivan Catskills to optimize tourism revenue continues on a day-to-day -day basis and we carry it out through brand exposure and visibility across all our owned earned and paid marketing channels. In these challenging times, the SCVA staff and its marketing partners did even more to support our businesses and our community. Through our social media channels, we honored hometown heroes who went above and beyond in service to our community. And we established a gift certificate program to help provide immediate revenue to restaurants and other small businesses affected by the economic shutdown. Every step of the way, we provided the latest communications from local, state, and federal officials about health and safety measures, financial resources, and more on a website page dedicated to all things relating to COVID-19. When it was time to reopen, we launched Catskills Confidence, a campaign to inform visitors about protocols we put in place to help instill confidence in travelers' minds. And that's just one small part of the work this organization and our members did all year to encourage visitation. Why wasn't it unique? Um, I think it was very different for everyone, of course. Um, I think it was unique for us. Our bread and butter of concerts and gathering was basically ripped out from under us in March and then we thought maybe by June and none of that happened um, and uh, it really just was unique in a sense where everything we were used to for a summer wasn't going to happen and we had to figure out what we could do to bring people together in a safe and responsible manner and way. At Bethel Woods we have programming one and that is pavilion concerts, event gallery concerts, all of the things that we're known for, basically. Programming two is traditionally our education programs, our special exhibits, our festivals, the shoulder season, anything else that can bring people together. And when the coronavirus happened and we all started working from home, we began programming three. And basically, that was a list of ideas where it really ran the gamut from drive through movie theaters or a holiday light show or dinners um, in our market sheds. And basically, it was just a brainstormed list company-wide of things that we could do that followed restrictions and guidelines, but still kept us alive. Um, and from that, we stripped it down, we made committees, we ran P&Ls, we figured out what the few things we could do and wanted to do were. And then we ended up, uh, before phase three and we could open the museum, we started these dinners, more than a meal, 
uh, dinner drinks and a spiel with Neil. And with those, we had outdoor dinners in our market sheds. We had our museum curator who couldn't put on an exhibit that year, but uh, used unique artifacts from our collections, where it was a helmet from Vietnam or a rug that was in the Woodstock documentary. And he spoke about those for 30 seconds before dinner, and then everyone else gathered safely, socially distanced um, to learn about them, but also enjoy a meal that they hadn't in a long time. People were happy just to be on site, to be together, to experience nature and a connection um, with the community or with the grounds. I think people need to feel connection. They need to feel like they're part of a community. They need to feel like they're part, or, part of something greater than themselves. Um, and I think we always knew that the feeling people get uh, dancing together on the lawn. But I think we learned we can do that in a lot of other ways as well. Um, it can be something simple like sharing a meal uh, with someone you see every day but in a different setting. Um, or a simple acoustic set can bring people to tears the same way a 16,000 person pavilion show does. Um, I think that's really powerful and we've always known that our grounds have a special feeling and a special vibe, but this just reinstated that even more. You know, something really cool and special happened there in 1969, and still today, after a global pandemic, the same feeling is there, and people have the same response to it. Isn't it wonderful to hear about success? Welcome, I'm Roberta Byron Lockwood, President and CEO of the Sullivan Catskill Visitors Association. Thanks to all of you watching. A special thank you to my board of directors for the time and talent that you've so generously given this organization. Each and every one of you is a true treasure to me and to my entire staff. I'm pleased to share that these directors have been re-elected to serve another term. And we're happy to welcome these newly elected directors. We're also grateful for the guidance and support of our federal, state, and county representatives, including Congressman Delgado, Senator Metzger, Assemblywoman Aileen Gunther, Senator-elect Martucci, Rob Doherty, Chairman of the Legislature and the Economic Development Committee, Nadia Rosh, Michael Brooks, Nicholas Salomon, George Conklin III, Luis Alvarez, Joseph Perillo, Minority Leader Ira Steingart, and Majority Leader Alan Sorensen. As you may know, March 16th, Resorts World Catskills had to close due to the pandemic. Recently, we were notified by the state that we could open, and we did open September 9th, 2020. During the closure, we had the opportunity to examine safety protocols that were pre-existing and modify these protocols into what we call a 21-point safety plan. This safety plan has been implemented during the downtime so that September 9th, when we open, both our employees and our guests were safe. This safety plan included new technology, new equipment, and lots of additional training. So Resorts World Catskills invested millions of dollars in PPE and COVID mitigation technology and equipment. Some of that equipment includes thermal scanners at all entry points, not only for customers, but for employees as well. Everyone that walks in has to be scanned with a non-invasive thermal scanner, and if your temperature is above 100.4 degrees, you will not be permitted to enter. We also installed over 200 sanitizing stations throughout the resort. These sanitizing stations include hand sanitizer as well as sanitizing wipes. Another important change as part of our 21 point plan is the addition of MERV air filters, MERV 15 air filters to be specific. These are hospital grade air filters. And another important point is that our HVAC system throughout the property only uses fresh air. So there's no recycled air throughout the property. This is evidence to me on a daily basis when I read through guest reviews that are either posted online through OTAs or some survey results that 
um, are in response to checkout surveys that we send out. Constantly, I see the word safe and clean repeated, and that is the new gold standard during this troubled time. I'm going to share this year's highlights and how we've been advancing our brand with courage, strength, and positivity. We'll tour our new facilities and go behind the scenes to meet our staff, and we'll close with a look at our plans for 2021. Along the way, we'll share stories from our members who shifted, adapted, and reinvented their business models. But first, we honor and we celebrate you. Every one of you and our 500 plus membership association is a 2020 star business. You met the challenges head on. In the most difficult of times, you've gone above and beyond, not just to keep your business running, but to keep people employed and to help keep our visitors safe while you welcome them with open arms. Congratulations and thank you. Our business had to pivot from day one where we had previously been um, a hospitality business, renting short-term vacation houses, and suddenly we were overnight a medium-term escape housing source. It was a different market. It was a different experience for the guests, experience for our staff in the office, and for the cleaners. And we had to retool. And um, under difficult circumstances and with um, emotions running high, and we just found ourselves in a completely different business. And so we had to determine how to react to that while just continually putting fires out. There was almost no advanced planning. We just didn't have enough hours in the day for that. So there was panic coming into us from our guests, from our homeowners, um, from some of our cleaners. And we were simply trying on a daily basis to resolve all of these issues. It was all about people. It was about relationships. Um, what helped us was that we received a lot of gratitude from, very much from the guests, um, but also from some of our homeowners who appreciated how we were handling situations. Um, and so the resources really were about um, brain power and troubleshooting and um, trying to put the new pieces of the new puzzle together to satisfy whatever situations we were in. We really had to rebuild the business. And so after that initial phase of getting through the day, we then started looking, this was probably in the late spring, where we started having glimmers of our old business, which was people who actually did ask, where are the local hiking trails? They started asking the hospitality questions that we are so eager to field, um, that we started taking a little bit of a deep breath and saying, okay, what does our business look like now? Um, what is the business we really want to be in? And it is in short-term vacation rentals, um, far and away over medium and long-term housing. And we made adjustments accordingly to return to that business. Um, and then we started saying, how did we, in the new normal, how do we retool to, to be a better version of that business? And we literally have been rebuilding every sector of, of our business since then. And we are in a much stronger position. We are now than we had been, we are a different business than we had been. And we are so poised for the growth that is ahead of us now that we had ironically planned for 2020. We're actually in a much stronger position to execute on that now than we were in January of 2020. One thing we know for sure 
everyone in this organization has had an incredible ability to keep going, and we did. We relocated our administrative offices and we opened a highly visible visitor center in Liberty, right off Route 17's Exit 100. Come have a look as Franklin Trapp, owner of Forestburg Playhouse and Tavern, takes you on an insider's tour and introduces you to our staff. Hey friends, welcome to the SCVA Visitor Center, brand new and fabulous. We're so excited you get to see it. We are located off Route 17 at exit 100, so we are in an incredibly visible spot, so tourists from near and far can come and learn all about our wonderful Sullivan cat skills. Plus, we're helping to revitalize the Liberty Mall. What could be better than that? An awesome part of this new conference room is this beautiful kitchen here. With this kitchen, we're able to make our guests feel welcome. We're able to take care of our dignitaries, our board members, and it just makes our meetings even more special. So, from the kitchen into the conference room, this is a space age, high tech conference room that allows us to communicate virtually with our members. We can host webinars in this room. We can have our board meetings in person and not in person because we know this is a Zoom age. It's perfect for the, the new technology that we have here. Come on everyone, let's pay a visit to Herb Clark, Vice President of Marketing and Sales. This is his beautiful office here. Hi, I'm Herb Clark, Vice President of Marketing and Sales. I take care of all the print media, digital placements, and working with our agencies. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Roberta Byron Lockwood, President and CEO of the Sullivan Catskills Visitors Association. Welcome to her wonderful office, which is adorned with amazing posters celebrating the historical and cultural past of the Catskills as we look towards a brighter and incredible future. Now everybody knows Holly. Welcome to her office. Welcome. I'm Holly Gassler. I'm the Administrative Operations Specialist. Uh, as the Operations Specialist, I manage many projects, um, most of them being social media, putting the travel guide together, as well as brochures and the overall office operations. This is Lori's office. She's our Director of Business Development. Hey, Lori. Hi, Franklin. Welcome. I'm Lori, and I'm Director of Tourism Development and Marketing. My job is multifaceted, but the key programs that I oversee include grant writing and grant management, uh, the famous Dove Trail, and I work with travel writers and tour operators from around the globe. Hey everyone, meet Tia, our fabulous administrative assistant. Hi Franklin, hi everyone. Hi, I'm Tia Whipple. I get the pleasure of greeting people as they come into the center. It's hard to run out of things to do here in the Catskills, but if you need direction, I'm the gal to say. Franklin and his team over at the Forestburg Playhouse and Tavern are another example of how our members adapted and reinvented their tourism businesses. We had to take our regular playbook and we had to throw it away and we had to figure out how we provide entertainment, how we reboot a 74th season that we had previously had to cancel, and we had to figure it all out from scratch. And um, that's, why, that's why it was out of the box. We, we were operating with new guidelines. Uh, we had to figure out how to implement safety protocols and guidelines, not only to keep patrons, artists, and staff safe, but we had to do it so that it was not off-putting, so that it was still warm and inviting and also would create an environment where you could come, relax, and be entertained in a live environment. So everything was different and we had to step back and think, how do we do this? When we realized that we would be able to reboot or figure something out, we had to, we had to look at our property. We had to look at our assets. What do we have that can make this possible? And um, we realized that the great outdoors, as it always is in, in the Sullivan Catskills, is, uh, is a gift and it is a treasure. And it's the same thing at the Forestburg Playhouse because we have beautiful gardens, expansive lawn areas, and a large patio that looks like a stage. So with that platform, we were able to in reinvent and create what we called Forestburg Under the Stars. And 
proceed to have a nine weekend series of sold out outdoor events and it was pretty cool. So what happened is once all the pieces started to come together and there were a million of them to, to figure out what phases are we in in the Sullivan Catskills? What, um, how do we set this up? What are the guidelines? What are the different elements that will make for safe and successful programming? What happened then is we reached out to talent. Um, talent in New York City, Broadway talent, cabaret stars, uh, and also uh, to people in our own backyard because in, in our Sullivan Catskills, we have amazing artists, amazing singers, bands, and we were able to create a series that was a really cool balance of Broadway and the Catskills. And we had a sold out run for nine weekends. So back in March and April, not only did we have to cancel our normal season, but I had to lay off um, almost 200 artists, um, including actors, singers, musicians, um, stage manager, directors, choreographers, designers. Uh, we had to say, we're sorry, we can't, we can't do this. So we're not abnormal in that sense. The entertainment industry has been decimated by the pandemic because people aren't, can't go inside to see a show. It's just that simple. So that was uh, one of the, the most horrible parts of the beginning. We started to figure out what, what the new normal would be, at least for now. We realized that, that there were an abundance of artists who were really excited and really hungry to, to share their talents uh, with audiences. And as a result, we were able to bring in some really incredible talent uh, to our outdoor stage. And, you know, as a result, we had t a Tony Award winner, Tony Award non nominees, multiple Broadway veterans and um, cabaret performers. So it turned out to be one of the most exciting lineups that you could imagine. Pandemic forced me, forced my team to reinvent and to think what can the Playhouse do in addition to what we've already done and what we already do. And we learned so many new things. It was just incredible. We learned that our property is not just the theater and the barn. It's not just the stage and the tavern. We have a beautiful outdoor space. We have the virtual world that we can explore through uh, performance and arts education. And I think we took advantage of that stuff and I think we also learned that we don't have to do things the same way ever again. We can, we can innovate, we can create new programming, uh, and we can become more relevant as a result. So I think it was invaluable, painful, but invaluable. Together with our creative, digital, and public relations teams, we re repositioned our Sullivan Catskills for a COVID-19 world. Guided by industry research, on consumer sentiment about the virus and transportation, our marketing communication partners at Fisher Mears Associates developed a new brand messaging to promote drive trips and staycations with a campaign called Always a Destination for Well-Being. We repositioned the Sullivan Catskills as a short drive for a safe, healthy escape, perfect for socially distant lifestyles. The campaign is theme-driven, flexible, and adaptable for all seasons. Streaming video was part of the media mix. We've always prepared our fresh Catskillicious cuisine in the safest way, and now our dining rooms is set up so you can be distant as you dine. Enjoy. I make sure my Sullivan Catskill guests find nothing but clean. Just like the whole property, you'll find your room sanitized and snug. Sleep well. Our Sullivan Catskills Outdoors has always been healthy and healing. Need a breath of fresh air, an original safe environment, be social and distant. Close, clean, confident. SullivanCatskills.com In the Sullivan Catskills, we've been working to make sure that you can enjoy gaming without it being a game of chance. Hey, we all need a win. Annie up. I make sure my Sullivan Catskill guests find nothing but clean. Just like the whole property, you'll find your room sanitized and snug. Sleep well. Our Sullivan Catskills Outdoors has always been healthy and healing. Need a breath of fresh air, an original safe environment, be social and distant.
The Sullivan Catskills. Close, clean, confident. SullivanCatskills.com. Fly the Sullivan Catskills Dove Trail. 50 beautiful, peaceful doves commemorating Woodstock. Top up the tank and take the tour. The Sullivan Catskills Pure Mountain Air makes your drives go further. It's easy to be safe and social, and staying healthy is par for the course. Tee up. Your Sullivan Catskills breakfast is fresh off the farm. Local ingredients are at our markets and restaurants. Healthy and Catskillicious. Enjoy. The Sullivan Catskills. Close, clean, confident. SullivanCatskills.com. And I'm so thrilled to share with you now our newest co-op wintertime TV ad campaign, running over OTT streaming video services. Have a look. The Sullivan Catskills. Your winter time, brighten your nighttime. At Bethel Woods Peace, Love and Lights, a drive through holiday light show until January 3rd. At the site of the Woodstock Festival. It's family time at the Villa Roma Resort. Snow tubing, sledding and indoor fun park with hot tubs and fireplaces for warming up. It's cocktail time with bootlegger and beaver kill from Do Good Spirits. For your winter time, SullivanCatskills.com. The Sullivan Catskills, your winter time. It's playtime at Resorts World Catskills. Gaming meets luxury. Live table games, slots, restaurants, elegant suites. 90 minutes from Manhattan. We bet you'll love it. It's quiet time. Frost rims the trees. The wind whispers. Time to nurture in the beauty and safety of nature. It's cocktail time with bootlegger and beaver kill from Do Good Spirits. For your winter time, SullivanCatskills.com. The Sullivan Catskills, your winter time. It's family time at the Villa Roma Resort. Snow tubing, sledding, and indoor fun park with hot tubs and fireplaces for warming up. It's playtime at Resorts World Catskills. Gaming meets luxury. Live table games, slots, and restaurants 90 minutes from Manhattan. It's cocktail time with bootlegger and beaver kill from Do Good Spirits. For your winter time, SullivanCatskills.com. Our new digital and social media partner, Awestruck, took us in new directions. They helped us grow our Facebook and Instagram fan base 45% over last year. The hashtags Sullivan Catskills and My Sullivan Catskills had over 80,000 interactions. We added 3,000 new email addresses to our database through two viral contests. And our search campaigns yield a cost per click below the industry average with a click-through rate well above that. We really sharpened our ability to target consumers through TV ads on OTT streaming video. In fact, our fall Catskills Confidence TV ads delivered well over 400,000 highly targeted impressions. Our influencer and media relations team at the door generated 1.7 billion impressions in earned media coverage for our Sullivan Catskills in publications including the Wall Street Journal, Thrill List, Condé Nast Traveler, Harper's Bazaar, and others. That's the equivalent of $34 million in ad revenue. The Doors efforts also brought us more than 25 press and influencer visits to our Sullivan Catskills. I'm thrilled to tell you that for the eighth time, our travel guide was recognized for its creativity. This time, a Gold Hermes Creative Award and an American Graphic Design Award. And our 2019 Winter TV ad campaign received a Platinum Hermes Creative Award and was also awarded an American Graphic Design Award. COVID-19 hurt, but against all odds, we learned to zig when maybe we really wanted to zag. We reinvented our business models, we rallied, and we repositioned our Sullivan Catskills as an incredible drive destination, perfect for social distancing and a peace of mind. In 2021, we'll pick up where we left off when COVID-19 interrupted our plans and press ahead to conduct market research with renowned strategist Berkeley Young of Young Strategies to develop a strategic plan to elevate our brand to the next decade. We're going to expand the Dove Trail and develop original programming to encourage even more visitation. OTT streaming and travel blogger Influencer programs are paying off, 
and we'll continue to use these paid media outlets and explore other ways to maximize our marketing efforts through highly visible and targeted channels, bringing more travelers to your business. Our partnerships with international and national partners, Brand USA and I Love New York, will continue, as will our work with our marketing teams, Fisher Mears, Ostrock, The Door, and Finn Partners. Again this year, we welcome new properties to our portfolio, including Eldred Preserve, Calicoon Hills, and Chatwell Lodge at the Chapin Estates. We're excited about these amazing new additions, which will expand our appeal and drive even more with visitors to the Sullivan Catskills. With new additions and our current hard work and ingenuity, we'll continue to be tourism leaders in the state, the country, and the world. Well, a single bite started about four years ago. My husband and I began it in the town of Livingston Manor. Um, we reacted to a statistic that's been ongoing for many years um, that rates Sullivan County is one of the worst health um, counties in the state. It's a statistic that we find tragic and sad and there's a lot of parts of those statistics that we really have no business in helping with. We don't have any uh, medical experience or access to transportation needs or many of the other things that are part of that statistic. But one part of it is also about food and, and health of food. And that's something that we do know something about. And so we started by um, engaging the eighth grade students in Livingston Manor and teaching about them about the difference between processed food and real food. Um, giving them an opportunity to try a single bite of a nutritious, real, local food, giving them the opportunity to have a meal with their colleagues um, in a restaurant, um, and all of that, what, what transpires uh, with sitting in front, sitting together with someone in a meal and, and what that means. The statistic is a number, and I think for years um, we, we saw it as a number. We saw it as a uh, statistic that it, there, there, was, there was, sorry, um, we felt somewhat removed from, from the number itself and didn't really internalize what it meant. In reality, it is one of the most visceral uh, statistics there are because it talks about hunger issues. And it talks about, excuse me, um, it talks about hunger issues with children. And the reality is that there are children in our county that go to bed without enough food in their mouth, in their stomach. And it's unacceptable. We think it's unacceptable. A single bite decided it was unacceptable. And luckily, so many people in this community agreed with us and have banded together to support the mission that we are now primarily focused on, which is eradicating hunger here in Sullivan County. The community has come together in pure financial donations um, through volunteer efforts in distributing food, in packing and producing food, in helping to um, give awareness to, to what we're doing and to make sure that we're reaching everyone that needs to be reached. So if someone is hungry, making sure that they know about us so that they can sign up and get food. Uh, we've had an unbelievable support through every single school district in Sullivan County, through the Lions Clubs, the Rotaries Clubs, Operation Feed, radio stations like um, Bold Gold Media and WJFF that helping to get our message out, local businesses that have given us, given part of their proceeds to a single bite. Um, our gardeners and that have, you know, donated $10 or $50 to the cause to someone um, that might have a little bit higher net worth that has given us a larger sum. So it's really been a community-based effort in every possible way and something we're very grateful for. And it's really the only reason we're able to uh, do what we do, which is, you know, we've reached over, we've made over 50,000 meals now uh, since March. Um, and we're producing on average about 2,000 a week. I think we went up to 2,500 a week at some point during the height of the pandemic. And certainly that wouldn't have been possible with uh, just the handful of people in our organization. We, we will know we are successful when the phone stops ringing uh, with families asking for help, when mothers no longer have to choose between paying rent and feeding their children. Part of me, I, I wonder why, you know, why is this an issue? Why is this an issue in one of the most developed countries in the world? Why do we have kids and families that don't have enough to eat? It's tragic. How can we be successful in the future and think that our country can continue to, to be what it is, um, as great as it is, if we can't even feed our own children? 
And how can we expect greatness of them if they're just thinking about when their next meal might come? People can help by um, financial support is really the, the most the easiest, most primary way that you can help us support. Uh, we have a great system of, of people that are producing the food, but we need the finances to help procure that food. We also need volunteers to help with delivering and sourcing and packaging, um, just getting the word out. Um, we also need help, and if you know of someone that needs help, that would also be a way to help. So there really are um, a, a number of ways. You can also come eat at any of our restaurants and donate. Um, to a single bite, um, right, right on the menu, just order a single bite meal and that will go 100% towards uh, feeding our community. During the time of pandemic, we went into this year ready to have our best year from a tourism, from a brand development. This was gonna be our breakout year and something I worked for 10 years to build. And what it ended up being was completely opposite. It allowed me to go through and look at what was going on at a national level and on a regional as well as New York State level and see how we can create a solution to a problem that was being um, experienced. Um, and the problem was a life or death problem. So the only thing I could do to help was to take what I made, which was beautiful craft spirits, and destroy them and to turn them into hand sanitizer. So what I saw was an opportunity to take who you were and what products you made and make them into a better solution for that time. When I look back over my lifetime and the person who toasted me, which was my friend Brian Hoke, he gave us a great toast before he went, he was a CIA commando, which is our paramilitary. He went off in, into his, before his last deployment and he toasted me to do good. He was a guy that, that had so much um, leadership so much. He was my hero. Walking, you, you, they make movies about people like him. And I was fortunate to have him as my friend, but for some reason he always respected me, helped me in a different light, the same light that I held him in. And he summed it up in the words, do good. And so that's who we always have been, that's who I've always been. So the shift in the company, the timing of, of our response and what we did, I did nothing great. I just went and took and I solved the problem. But it's the same thing I would have done if someone would have came to me and said, hey, I have a flat tire. Well, okay, how do we fix it? It's what you should be doing in life and in, in your, um, the world around you is most people don't really, everybody says they care about people. No one cares about anyone. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of selfishness. And I think what makes our country great and what makes America great is this belief that we can work together and solve problems if you work together. And that's what we see in this community. And that's what we think we did, is we we did what anyone else, we hope anyone else would have done. And that's, that's why if the words do good, we wouldn't have done anything different. It just happened that way because that's who we are. And so what I started doing is I started looking at the problem. The problem in our country was not enough plastic, not enough little plastic caps. I know that because we manufacture components to pro we, we work with in that field. And we saw that there was gonna be a big problem. So what we did is we looked at what everybody else were trying to solve the problem the same way. We went through and we created five gallon buckets. Everybody else was fighting over four ounce little bottles that wouldn't help one doctor. It'll help him for 10 minutes with this, this thing. And every nurse that needs it. So I looked at it and I said, how do I get five gallons? Well right to an area where you can get a lot of bottles filled and you can use a lot of sanitizer. So that, that, that was what I saw an opportunity and, and I acted on the opportunity and it was really cool to see. We sent out over 90 million pumps of sanitizer. If you can imagine, 90 million hands can be cleaned or times two. Yeah, so it's 180 million uh, hands. But, but when you look at that, out of a little distillery, in the heart of the Catskills, it's pretty amazing. It's amazing how far that sanitizer went. So it went from everything from friends of mine that command ships around the Navy that called over and ordered it themselves just because they needed, they were going on deployment. They needed bottles of sanitizer. We had army convoys that were coming in to go handle, handle their duties down in New York City. They stopped over and we were donating it to them. We had people all the way from as far as Southern Jersey, all the way out to the Navajo Nation out in Arizona 
that were calling us to go through and, and ask for help from a little town in the middle of nowhere, that's pretty amazing. And that's what I think Sullivan is. It's this little town in, uh, in the middle of the Catskills that people come and find, and it's a great community. And I think uh, that's what makes this area special. While we all look forward to a vaccine, history has taught us that despite floods, wars, famine, terrorism, fires, recessions, depressions, and pandemics, travel always comes back. With that mantra as our guide, we continue to press ahead. Thank you for joining us, and a special thanks to all of our sponsors.